guys, I got coffee in one hand, sitting on the edge of my bed, keeping it real. Just want to show you. I wanted to say that I am starting to get um, progress on my left foot, activating my short flexors, so my flexor brevis, and its cohort of assistance, which is an upregulation of hallucis brevis, and uh, I think digiti minimi really helps kind of make this feel as robust as it does on my right foot as well. Um, probably abductor hallucis a little stabilizing. One of the things I'm both looking at and that I think is associated with what I'm feeling and the activation of the muscles is the way my right foot toes can go basically straight like over a cliff. And if I make that a more intense movement, it absolutely, uh, it, it's very, it feels good. Like it feels like the natural progression is for my fr big toe and second toe to, to both sort of join forces and they become a really dominant like driver of the action. Almost like I'm gonna squeeze a pencil, like you can see. Like I'm gonna squeeze a pencil or something between those toes really hard. And same thing, like if I rise up onto uh, the ball of this foot and I'm really trying to squeeze that arch to get it over, you know, get the ankle up over the foot. Um, <clears throat> I feel that that is really where I'm driving the action, is sort of between those two, those two rays, we'll say, of the first and big toe. So big toe and second toe. Man, I wish the names were a little more consistent. I'm sorry, guys. I gotta, I gotta make a key for just the consistent names I'm gonna use. So big toe and first toe. Anyway, there you go. On the left, it is getting so much better. Like really, not just the way it looks, which still <laughs> cracks me up, the way the toes have their own design on this side, but um, not just the way it looks, but the way it feels. There's a much better, what I used to call tongue depressor movement, right? It's tongue depressor down. Because you really feel like those toes are getting pulled down at their base. At the base, I'll show you on the big toe, but it's for all the toes. At the base of the knuckle, right there, right? Right above what we think of colloquially as the ball. Because that's where those flexors attach, right? The flexors I want don't attach way out here, so they don't curl the toe. I mean, I want them both. <laughs> I want all the muscles, but the ones I'm specifically trying to upregulate, they attach lower. So that then the toe flexes it flexes at that joint, and this is why you see that joint sort of dome slightly. You see the, the depression in the skin there. Depression, like the upward little mounds of the skin over the knuckle, okay? That's what I'm looking for, the blood being a little bit pressed out there, because that's the hinge axis. The toes are going straight down at that axis. Now, this foot has a bunch of things that make that more challenging. I'm sorry I'm not using a good mic right now. Uh, anyway, hope it's not terrible. Um, one is I get more of a convergence of the toes. They converge, right? They get narrower, they anti-splay faster or a little bit more uh, earlier on in the movement. That happens to this, to the right foot as well, but not until I get a lot of flexion. And then I start to feel them come together. I can make it happen otherwise, but that's what I'm looking for is a clean tongue depressor. Everyone's going straight down, right? That's helping me, the, the hinge at that base knuckle is helping me feel the muscles between, like basically the inner osseae and the lumbricals, the muscles that are between the metatarsals in front of the arch. So in front of the point of your arch, these guys, right? Now, it's also dramatically a result of muscles that attach in front of the heel and pull, pull. Okay, so the convergence and the flexion, I think the flexion, because those muscles also insert into these tendons, they're all collaborating, okay? It's which, basically it's like which team is on the court because you have layers of fascia in your foot, I think four to be precise, and the different muscles in them have different relationships and co-coordinate. Anyway, so what I was talking about this left foot is number one, the toes converge a little bit prematurely. They get convergence before they get tongue depressor flexion. Also, I start to feel if I really push the action, I start to feel some, some activation behind my heel, which tells me it's the flexors that aren't just in the foot, but the ones that come up the back. Uh, and that's what I want to avoid. And part of that is because those toes are still not totally straight. 
And so the flexors that I was telling you about a minute ago that attach to the tips of the toes are still a little too interfering with this action. I want those muscles, 100%, very important. But I think, uh, but they are still, I'm not able to isolate them and just target strengthening the foot, right? They are interfering and therefore I'm just on a loop kind of strengthening them and they bypass, they allow me, they, you know, they force me to bypass, they make it impossible for me to access uh, targeting the foot itself. Just to be clear why that's a problem. Cause you're like, why don't, why is it, a, if those, if they do basically the same thing or something really similar, they're another flexor in the foot, what's wrong with them? doing this so um you know uh, yeah so again i um i'm seeing their interference by the toes being a little bit curled still feeling the activation here not feeling as robust an activation in the foot itself and feeling that the toes are converging more than their tongue depressoring not more than okay not more than but more than they do on this foot earlier in the movement also still seeing that goofy splay thing, which I do not, the middle between the second and third toe. I do not feel that, and I don't see it when I'm bearing weight, but in these particular movements, there is something that is causing that divergence. I still have not figured out exactly what it is. It has really diminished, and I don't feel it when I'm, um, like I said, I don't feel it when I'm bearing weight and doing foot loading exercises. And I did used to see it. I still didn't have symptoms. A lot of people, I'm mentioning the symptoms because a lot of people do have symptoms there. So no, that is a red flag. I don't want that, not just because of the aesthetic. I don't want it because it's a sign that something is not coordinating the way I want it to in my foot. And that's a vulnerability that I'm gonna could potentially get an injury there. Okay, if it's not symptomatic, you know, and you're not an obsessive about it, don't stress. Okay, so the convergence, the, here's two things I just wanna mention about this. It is a problem that I'm getting that convergence in part because that action of the toes squeezing together is detracting from the action of the toes pushing straight down. I want as much straight down action as I can get before I feel anything else because that is my foot rooting into the floor to use a at Dr. Emily term rooting she's with her, with her accent she would call it rooting into the floor she roots those toes are driving down any degree of either curling of the toes so when the long flexors get involved i.e on this foot that bending the hammering that you're seeing that's interfering with those feet driving down okay giving you connection with the floor, that is traction with the floor. Anything else, feet squeezing or feet curling, toes curling, is literally you, it's you peeling out, okay? It's action of your foot that is not pressing into the floor. So you're, think about what that means to your glutes, to your hamstrings, to your calf, to your core, to that entire chain of muscles, assuming you're doing something like walking right? Each foot is representative of systems of muscles that co-coordinate up your body, right? All the way to your shoulders, all the way to your hands. They have a relationship with their same side arm movement and a relationship with their opposite side arm movement, right? There's tons of systems going on that are all sort of cascading and dependent on your ability to ground your foot, to push into the floor, to push off, to be propulsive, Look up, you know, you'll see lots, well, you won't see enough videos. Sadly, you won't see enough videos about anti-propulsive gait. It's just a term that podiatrists and movement specialists use, and then they don't really tell you too much about it. They're like, oh, you won't want to have an anti-propulsive gait, and we intuitively know what it means, but it's like, it's a huge problem, and they don't really tell us how to solve it. <laughs> anyway, this is how you solve it. You solve it by being able to push down, because if your foot is, the, is starting to peel off the floor, you can't push down. You can't properly put weight on that foot. Your nervous system won't let you put weight on that foot. Now you think you're putting weight on that foot because you change foot, right, left, right, left. So you take a step. I've been taking a step with this left foot for decades, but it's like a freeloading step. It's a half-ass step. I'm just balancing on that foot long enough before I can recover on the right. Now I am being a little bit facetious because for me, it's not that, it's not that egregious. I actually have quite good balance on this side of my body and I don't have hip pains, symptoms or whatnot. But 
if you are someone who has worn out your right hip and you got a bunion on your right foot and now your left foot hurts, you know, your, your heart's starting to have symptoms on your left foot because you're probably favoring that right foot. There is something going on here. You are abusing that. You're not able to use your feet efficiently. All right, I've gotten way off course, but I'm literally thinking of multiple people I work with. And this is kind of where it starts. Their feet don't work. They can't push into the ground. They can't use their body fascially. They're forced to use their body muscularly, which is inefficient, which we don't care about for like fuel consumption. We care about because if we're moving inefficiently, we're putting massive wear and tear on our body. Our parts are supposed to last. Our joints are supposed to last. They don't last when we use them inappropriately, when we put this type of abuse on them. If we walk properly because we can be propulsive because we can activate those systems foot to opposite shoulder and hand right just thinking of gait thinking of gait if i can move fashionably the way i'm designed my parts don't wear out okay but because most of us don't and we are moving anti-propulsively we we massively abuse our joints and we get injured right these are these chronic pains and injuries of collapse Part of it is we can't use our feet. And I'm a little exercised about it because when then you hear podiatrists and whatnot say, or movement specialists who's ever talked about it, saying that you move in an anti-propulsive gait, it makes it sound like it's an issue for like an athlete. They're not able to propel themselves, you know? They can't like cut and turn and change, you know, they can't change direction and decelerate and whatnot and accelerate up the field. They don't have their performance as, as high as it should be, right? No. It is an issue for each and every one of us. We might not be running or sprinting hard. We're just walking well, and we need to be able to propel. It's proportional propel propulsion, right? It's low-key propulsion, but it is propulsive. <sighs> okay, so that all starts with being able to push into the ground. Not because I'm going to push myself forward with my foot because I have to push with these muscles to anchor in the ground so that there's traction, traction into the ground. So I'm not pulling my foot off the ground. I'm not squeezing the toes away from the ground. I'm driving straight down, tongue depressor down. It's more than just these muscles. These are just the best illustrators, okay, of the point. If I can't do that, then my glutes and my hamstrings, my core, they cannot and will not, like I said, they cannot and they will not even let me put appropriate weight on this foot or your, any foot, <laughs> let alone use the muscles to drive me forward because they know this foot is on ice. This foot is, slip, is slipping. This foot is, doesn't have good traction. So nothing that is correlative with this side of my body, which is the rest of my body, everything is all directly or indirectly, will not work as well. All right? So that is why, 13 minutes in, I obsess, obsess about activating the short flexors in my foot. And I'll keep you posted on my journey. And I hope you become um, not as obsessed as I am. It might not be healthy. <laughs> but if you need to be this obsessed for your own life and your own recovery and own healing, um, and it helps you recapture foot function. And, you know, you, I should also say incremental gains make a difference. So this foot might not be, you know, doing this as beautifully, quote unquote, as, as my, I am on my right. It's not. But it is functioning extremely well. Like, I do not have symptoms, and it has made a big difference from where I was just even a couple months ago once I've gotten more strategic. But, you know, within the last year, because I've also gotten more strategic in the last year, um, let alone over the past several years, okay? So it has made a massive difference. And if I had known to be doing this for the last couple years, because I just had thought about my own strategy of strengthening my feet beyond the superficial crap that's just like on loop, the uninspired, uncreative, unnuanced, you know, same info on every video that you see. If I had just started thinking about my own anatomy and thinking about my own feet, man, I would be so far ahead. Like it didn't take long for this foot to really, really come along. So I'm annoyed by that, but also I'm excited to share with you 
so that you don't waste as much time as me. Quote, unquote, waste, right? Anything you do, learning about your body is not wasteful. But you know what I'm saying. You know how I mean it. Love you guys.